Hi, this is Jenny Whistler, and I am doing the anatomy and physiology of taste. The sense of taste affords humans as well as animals the ability to evaluate what it ingests or eats and drinks. So at the most basic level, taste helps us evaluate what we should ingest that's going to be nutritious or what we should not ingest that could potentially be poisonous or contain toxins. So we also develop over time taste preferences. Food preferences and aversions to food both are involved in the sense of taste. When we look at the anatomy of our tongue, you see that the sense of taste is mediated by what's called taste receptor cells, which are bundled in clusters called taste buds, which are located on the tongue within the papillae. Um, and in most animals, including humans, the taste buds are very small and they are small little, almost like peg shaped um, items that are found on the tongue papillae. So typically with a microscope, you can't see these with the naked eye, but you can see the papillae, which if you've ever um, eaten a popsicle or drank Kool-Aid or Gatorade that had a blue or purple tint, you can actually physically see these um, papillae on the tongue, just like this. Taste buds are composed of groups anywhere between 50 and 150 taste receptor cells that are bundled together kind of like a cluster of bananas represented there in those little dots. And when the taste cells are stimulated by a binding of chemicals to their receptors, essentially that results in an action that's transmitted to the brain. Once the taste signals are transmitted to the brain, several afferent neural pathways are activated that are important to the digestive function. For example, tasting food is followed rapidly by increased salivation. So the increased salivation is, a, is an example of how taste um, you know, plays a role in relation to the rest of the body in that um, its relation to digestion. Um, in addition to that, the transduction by taste receptor cells shows a clear sense of smell profoundly affects the sensation of taste. So think about how tastes are blunted and sometimes different when your sense of smell is disrupted due to having a stuffy nose or a cold. So based on the information that's transported from the tongue to the brain, there are thought to be at least five basic qualities of taste. So as we know, many of the foods we eat or the dishes we prepare to ingest can be a combination of different tastes. So Sometimes it's sweet and sour, for example, or salty and savory. So let's take a look at the basic taste. So you typically have sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and savory, also known as umami. So when you are tasting that sweetness, what you're perceiving is caused by sugar and its derivatives such as fructose or lactose. Um, but other types of substances can also activate the sensory cells that respond to sweetness. So, for example, this can include some protein building blocks like amino acids and some alcohols that are found in fruit juices or alcoholic drinks. The next one is sour. So, as you can see in this diagram, I have indicated where the sensory taste cells are located for that particular sense of taste. 
um, sour is on the sides of the tongue. And this is mostly acidic um, liquids or solutions like lemon juice or organic acids that taste sour. This sensation is caused by hydrogen ions split off by an acid dissolved in a watery solution. And next we have salty represented in blue on the diagram. And salty is food containing mostly table salt that we taste as salty. And the chemical basis of this is a salt crystal, which consists of sodium and chloride. Mineral salts like the salts of potassium or magnesium can also cause a sensation of saltiness. Next, we have bitter, which is located in yellow on the diagram. And a bitter taste is brought by many different substances. There's about 35 different proteins in the sensory cells that respond to bitter substances. So this can be explained by many different bitter species of plants, some of which were poisonous. So if you look at that from an evolutionary standpoint, um, recognizing which ones were poisonous was a matter of survival. So bitterness, um, that taste can have a wide variety of substances. Next, we have savory, also known as umami, represented here, kind of covering the larger surface area of the center of the tongue. And this is similar to the taste of a meat broth. It's usually caused by glutamic acid and aspartic acid. Um, this can be found um, in ripe tomatoes, meat and cheese, all of which contain a lot of glutamic acid. Asparagus would be an example of one that contains the aspartic acid. Um, Chinese cuisine uses glutamate, the glutamic acid salt, as a flavor enhancer. Um, so that's why a lot of Chinese cuisine has that savory taste. And that's added to make the foods more intense. The savory of the food's more intense. <laughs> so something else you might be thinking is hot or spicy a taste? It's actually not. So the sensation of something being hot or spicy um, is not a taste. It's actually a pain signal sent by the nerves that transmit touch and temperature sensations. So when it comes to foods seasoned with chili, the substance capsaicin is what causes the sensation of pain and heat. Thank you so much for <laughs> your time and attention today and learning about taste.